then I'm gonna let me let little- me just set this up for those of you who are just arriving. People still coming in. Welcome. Um, we're gonna take a look at a video here made by Jail. He's a small YouTuber. 1,000 subs, go in there, give him a like, and he's going to be talking about the new capital ships, a deep dive. He's going to be talking about ships that we've known about for a while, most likely, but a lot of new faces in here, so uh, set your faces to stunned, as I'm assuming he's going to be talking about things like the Pegasus and the Retribution, not yet shown, although that's going to be a nice surprise if people don't know the ship exists and then suddenly it pops up, but uh, let's go. This is Jail and Star Citizen's new capital ships roll buzz around potential new capital ships visible in the I Held the Line Squadron 42 trailer from CitizenCon 2953. But what are they? Are they battleships, cruisers, carriers, and what information can we glean from past sources? In this video, I'll be going way back to the start of the project to talk about the information we have around these ships. The structure I'm going to use is that I'm going to list just the facts in a mostly chronological order, then I'm going to go on to draw some of the strong connections between those data points and finally I'll end by indulging in a little speculation. This video may contain small spoilers for Squadron 42 and will reference one leaked image from development. This might not be absolutely every morsel of news, but I am going to cover some background information that highlight the remaining gaps in our knowledge, and I think these are the pertinent points. Between 2012 and 2013, Stretch Goals added numerous ship classes to the game. These included the Cruiser at 4.5 million- Oh my god, million. the Stretch Goals. The stretch goals stopped a long, long time ago. Let me just throw in the thought here very quickly. And uh, I want to see these kind of come back because there were goals which gave you stuff. They said, if we hit $5 million, you will get a rifle or you will get this. And it stopped. You know, I would like to see them say, if we hit $650 million, everyone gets a small ship. When we hit $700 million, thank you, backers, everyone gets this starter ship. Right? Why not? Like, give us something small. Uh, like, the starter ships especially are useless to the majority of us, but it's great as a taxi from one place to another, right? I say, bring back the stretch goal. Say, when we hit $750 million, when we hit $8 million, everyone gets a little thing. Bring it back. Escort carrier at $15 million, and the battle cruiser at $17 million. Of these, the cruiser is described as playable, the battle cruiser as flyable, but no such description is given for the escort carrier. Note that the Bengal, which we know we may be able to find a derelict version of, but we can't buy, is also listed Can't as buy as yet. <laughs> the F8 you weren't supposed to buy. How many of you here go, oh, I'd buy the Bengal carrier in a second. I don't want to bother trying to find one and fixing it. Sell me the damn, b- I will liquidate I will liquidate my entire hangar to buy one Bengal carrier and have the F8 on it, and that is it. That is my. That is all I need in the game, right? <laughs> and obviously, the Bengal carrier is going to be solo. It's my solo ship, just me and like an NPC, and my engineer NPC, and that's it. <laughs> no, no one's coming on my Bengal, man. <laughs> you know, you do it. Like, hey guys, uh, can someone come pick me up from uh, Grimex? Yeah, 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 I'm coming. Let me just grab my Bengal. You're going to solo that thing everywhere. I know you will. <laughs> March 2013, and the subscriber magazine Jump Point publishes a galactic guide to Cathcart which references an indefatigable class battleship. This name is removed from the guide when it is later published to the main website. The indefatigable class battleship is also mentioned in the May 2013 Vandal Warship analysis. Jump point issues through 2013 track the story of the Void Rats, a UEE Navy squadron assigned to the UES Africanus, a support carrier that's just a retrofitted battle cruiser. Africanus? He'd been parted to the teddy bears back, but Grandma had grown and saw an Africanus. I've never heard about any of this. Wow, there's, there's a lot of lore. The F7s are alongside more modern than the Africanus, a ship hundreds of years out of date. I haven't touched the lore in this game. I haven't even peeked at the lore because I'm kind of saving it for Squadron 42. Um, I want it all to be a surprise, kind of. Used for less important naval operations. In January 2014, Lore Builder Episode 13 listed the prefix designations for different classes of capital ship used by the UEE. 
these designations have since been used numerous times, though we can't necessarily assume that all will still be valid. Note that the escort carrier, Charlie Victor Echo, cruiser, battleship and battle cruiser are all included at this point. In December 2014, the Pegasus-class escort carrier, which had been mentioned before, was All right, so what you're looking at here is the Pegasus-class carrier. Now, this is actually... Uh, I don't recall if this was the leak from the, the 2015 Disco Lando leaks. Uh, anyone who knows better than that might refresh me on that. But there was a catastrophic uh, security breach at CIG, Disco Lander was doing one of his shows and behind him was a screen. And in that screen, there was a URL. And that URL was a partial URL to about 70 gigs or 100 gigs worth of internal build of Star Citizen that was sitting on the cloud. Now, the last five or six digits of that URL were obscured. But uh, some enterprising individuals from a community that wanted to see Star Citizen fail uh, brute forced the last couple of digits and managed to get the file of 70 or 80 gigs of a ton of builds of ships and I don't know whatever data there was in there. Uh, and I believe this was possibly one of them. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of stuff was lost or lost or was leaked out in 2015 because of that. And I don't know if this was an image which was released before or after that. It's been a while. Ethan, what's up? Good morning. Yeah, the Amazon web server, oopsie. And that's why uh, Disco Land... It was pretty scary at the time. It um, was very concerning that uh, Disco Lando might lose his job because of that. Anyone knowing who Scipio Africanus was? Very... <laughs> of course I know what who that is. I don't know who that is. I have to look it up. And shown to be a long ship with a side sun asymmetric landing bay. Previously, this had been referred to as the Panther in some conversations, though this was the first image of the vessel shown. It has been shown and discussed a number of times before and since, but Morning. there's little change from what we see at this stage. It's described in the Holiday livestream that year as being the player's home for part of Squadron 42. May 2018 and a special of Around the Verse features the latest character model of Randall Graves, the character played by John Rhys Davis. The character's jacket pairs a patch marked UEES Chimera, Charlie Victor Echo 3-5. This patch moves around his jacket in other videos, but still prominently featured in both the October 2018 cinematic teaser and the 2023 I Held the Line video. July 2021 and lawmakers community questions. Artemis, thank you very much for the super chat. Sorry, I, I wasn't looking at it. I've been distracted by the video. Thank you very much, everyone on YouTube. Uh, sorry for ignoring you. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I had that video. I get the, the chat scroll behind my screen. Thanks for reminding me. I'm terrible at streaming, by the way. Ruddy and one, welcome to the stream. Indefatigable class battleship is a historical but defunct class of vessel. Artemis, one pound. Thank you, sir. September 2021, and a Galactopedia article entitled Integrity and Honor has been published. The article mentions a cruiser called the UES Integrity, which featured a propaganda recruitment film in 2935, 10 years before the events of Squadron 42. Late 2022, and leaked images begin to surface online of two capital ships. All right, so this space. we saw. What we basically have here is the, it looks like the same back end, but if you look at the front, we see that those two giant cannons have been replaced. Um, so you have a top deck, for, I guess, for landing or carrying more stuff on the top for just quick access, and an interior also. Is that what we're seeing on this one? Because it looked like a separate ship, but it's the same body type, right? Oh, it's also missing part of the back. It's missing that at the back too. So, yeah, that is a, a chunky, aggressive Bengal versus your light carrier Bengal. Actually, left side being new Pegasus. No, right, really? Maybe if they just dropped the Pegasus. But uh, like in Wing Commander, right? You had the uh, the top deck where the the planes land on a runway because you know, obviously, in space. You need a runway to land on, but uh, you can definitely see big differences. These gigantic, I'm going to guess what size, eight, nine. Yeah. Both appear to be made from parts of the Bengal carrier, but with key differences. One appears to have a flight deck with a tapered nose, while the other retains the Bengal's distinctive duck bill, but replaces the flight deck with large cannons. Both appear to only have underslung rear engines and lack the upper engines of the Bengal. 
September 2023, and as part of the last monthly Galactopedia update before CitizenCon, the Pegasus is added to Galactopedia. It is, pres it is described in the present tense and as a standard component of UEE Navy fleets. October 2023 and the new Squadron 42 trailer drops during CitizenCon 2953. There are two clips that I'll be looking at in detail. The opening shot over Vega 2. Damn, let's go in all out. Jail, good job. Uh, he's gone and drawn red squares around every single ship versus m when my analysis was, I don't see anything too exciting and I moved on. But this guy's actually pausing and stopping on each and every one. <laughs> I love that people take this much attention to detail. It's awesome. And the later scene of Admiral Bishop's speech, which ends with another exterior shot of the fleet. I've picked out every potential capital ship that I think I can find across both clips. I'm highlighting them across the footage so you can double check my interpretations if you like. Note that if a ship appears in two of my annotated snapshots, it should have the same identifying number. While most names and shapes are indistinct, during one shot we can clearly see the UEES Corvus and a sneak peek at the UEES Integrity, viewable past Mark Strong's legs, and I put How together How the hell a does he read that text? God damn. Hang on. How's he do it? <laughs> Stop laughing. This will happen to you too. Yeah, Daredevil knows what's up, right? <laughs> Hit your late 40s. It's going to happen. Stop laughing. The reconstruction of the different shots we have of this. Now I'm going to move on to drawing connections between these points of information. And I believe that these points of analysis, while not explicitly stated in the videos, are things that we can be quite confident about. Let's first analyze the ships we see in the new trailer. Sorting these vessels into their classes, I believe we can see one Bengal, the Gregari, 12 Javelins, 7 Idrises, 9 Hammerheads, which aren't capitals but could be mistaken for them, and 10 ships that don't appear to conform to an announced ship class. I have tried to ignore the Hornets and Retaliators also in shot, but one snuck in. Within our unidentified ships, all but two appear to be of the same class, which I'll term Class A, with this Y-shaped ship and this ship with a carrier deck being the only outliers in Class B. Of the leaked ships in 2022, I believe that our unidentified Class A ships match the ship on the right. This is the craft characterized by a Bengal-shaped nose and three large guns, two four and one after the tower. Furthermore, I have grouped both the UES Integrity and the UES Corvus into Class A. As for the other vessel on the left, this is characterized by a flight deck projecting from under the tower, a Y-shaped profile, and prominent ventral projections that are absent from Class A. As it appears to be a smaller carrier, the only designation from the 2014 Lawmaker's Guide it would match is the Escort Carrier, a class designation occupied by the Pegasus. The Pegasus still exists somewhere within the law, as we can tell by the so extremely recent... Is that what is implying that this particular ship we're seeing here does not exist anymore? And is out? Is that what he just said? Battleships running size 14 shipbreaker cannons like what the Bengal uses. Oh. Yeah, so what's that? There were three size 14s per turret on that. That's, that's going to be awesome. The big ship battles are going to be amazing. So this is no longer, he's saying, in the game? Or got removed and reusing Bengal turrets. Huh. Slicer, what's up? I see you're checking out the Zeus. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> we'll go back to Zeus discussions in a second. That's our go-to. But uh, we're looking at the Bengals and new carriers right now. Uh, let's keep rolling the video. Addition to the Galactopedia. While its model seen in 2014 is conspicuously absent from the naval shots, the retention of that model on Randall Graves' jacket, in, despite an update pass, implies that the UES Chimera, whatever it was, did look like that old 2014 Pegasus model. The Charlie Victor Echo serial number matches the escort carrier, and the, like the Pegasus, the Chimera comes from Greek so mythology. Why are they using an old guy as their model here? I mean, is this basically representative of the demographics that are backing Star Citizen? Is this what we look like to them? 
Is this where it is? Alex Snow for five bucks. Thank you very much. Favorite stream. Thank you. I see. I got to come clean with you guys. I actually pay Alex to say these things. And then he pays no way back. It's a circular thing. <laughs> anyway, what we see here is what CIG thinks the average backer looks like, which is a 60-year-old man. And Daredevil's like, I, it looks like a normal person. <laughs> Following the trend, money bags keep to the same theme as the leadership of the class. Now, on to more outlandish speculations. This is where I'm going beyond what I'm confident in saying it probably is true and into areas where it's very possible that I'm wrong. I believe that Class A, which included the integrity of the Corvus, are from a ship class. It's a photo of me. Screw you, unknown cruiser. citizen. Mods. Now, ban that guy for insulting me. Called. I can't <laughs> think of a thematic connection between integrity and. Corvus, which Jack Raven for five, thank you, old Navy vet. So the exact names might just be incidental, yeah. could be breaking. Uh, so I'm I'm partially joking, all right, but these the the old guy wearing the jacket there, they sat down and go, what does our average backer look like? And the team said, well, they're typically between fifty and sixty years old, and uh, you know, served in the Korea of Vietnam at this point. And that's an accurate representation of the average backup star citizen. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's true. <laughs> Naming patterns, which is not unheard of, or may just be different generations. It is Gimli, you're right. They call flights of ships, which do sometimes change naming pattern, as in the Hammerhead class. Alternatively, one could be the cruiser and the other the battle cruiser, with the differences not being obvious in the video, as we can see it here. And it is worth recognizing that Galactopedia uses the lower case for describing ship classes, so it's actually quite hard to tell if a cruiser is a class or if it's just a description in the same way that one might idly and non-technically describe all capital ships as, like, battleships, for example. If I had to guess, I'd say it's more likely to be the Corvus-class cruiser because that's a constellation and RSI ships are quite often named after constellations. I think it's highly likely that the previous model we've seen for the Pegasus will not be featured as part of modern fleets, and instead will be kept only as an earlier generation of escort carrier. Interesting theory. Interesting. Um, I wouldn't put it past them. You're, you're right. I mean, should they spend... Look how long the Banu Merchant's taking, or look how long the Javelin Idris took to make. Uh, do you think they'll be sitting back there trying to create this ship at this point in time? Um, this model, what you're seeing here, was created years ago. We're talking 2015 or earlier. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. So it's very possible that this will not be anything we see in the game because the amount of work it's going to take to bring it up to current standards is right. I, I would not disagree. Right? A waste of dev time. Yeah. It's not like if they release this, everyone go, oh my God, it's so amazing. I, I, I I don't know if any of you care at this point if something like this is released. Like the Retribution, I think, is uh, an asset in Squadron. Uh, it's like the big secret weapon that the UE is working on. This is just my theory crafting. Uh, I haven't checked it, uh, the lore on this. But I'm guessing the UE creates the Retribution as like the final hammer blow on the Vanduul. And seeing that in action is probably the climax of Squadron 42. Uh, but that's just my guess. Alex Snow for another five. Thank you very much. I want to write Star Citizen short story fan fiction. Do you think CIG would have a problem with that? Uh, no. Look, anything community made is appreciated, Alex Snow. No one has a problem with it. Unless it's going to be like triple uh, X rated, in which case submit to me first for approval before you release it. <laughs> yeah. That's so I don't agree with, uh, I mean, I agree with Jail. Uh, I see this as wasted dev time. No one's going to go, wow, I can't wait for this to come out. Yeah. If it does appear, it might be only as a set piece, as implied for a segment of Squadron 42. Its absence from footage at this stage, a month after they said it's a standard part of naval fleets, is to me just a bit too suspicious. The old model with a hanger bolted onto the side is reminiscent of the description of the retrofitted Africanus mentioned in Void Rats, and they might reuse that idea of having the Chimera be one of those retrofitted ships, basically just an old ship with something bashed onto the side of it. Instead, I suspect that the Class B ships 
will have replaced it as the escort carrier of the line. Since the recent Galactopedia specifically mentions the Pegasus as the current model and as featuring in many fleets, I think it's... That is interesting. I'm trying to just place the design here. Um, that's, that's the bridge? For sec or is that the engine? That's an engine. What's that? Is that the bridge? And this is the flight deck with like ships landing on it? I'm seeing it correctly, right? Possible that the name will transfer to the new model with the Greek mythology connection being an inherited feature from the class that Chimera belonged to. This is the area where I'm least confident mm. because there's a lot of good options of what they could do, and the Pegasus might simply be absent because the presence of a Bengal makes it redundant. I don't think we've seen a battleship yet, and indeed such a vessel might not even really exist outside of lore and history, given that it only appears in a handful of articles and was never a stretch goal. I don't see any connections between the vessels we see in the new video and the information we've seen about battleships, like the indefatigable ones. It might be a defunct concept in modern naval language, superseded by a more carrier-focused doctrine and later the Retribution Dreadnought. I hope this overview has been of interest to you. Do you agree with my conclusions? Let me know in the comments. I do. If you enjoyed this